They say good things come to those who wait, and you, my dear viewers, have waited long enough. So sit back, relax, and prepare to be savagely beaten around the eyeballs by glorious gaming content in the form of Platform 32's seventh half hour special. My name's Ian Higton, and coming up in the show, I check out Section 8 Prejudice and Brink, both of which are online team based shooters, but which one will come out on top? You'll have to watch and find out, cause I ain't say nothing, governor. Honest. I'll also be bringing you two 3DS reviews as well. The handheld honeys I'll be reviewifying for your viewifying pleasure today are Bonkers Submarinum Up Steel Diver and turn based strategy game Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Shadow Wars, which, given its genre, is surprisingly not that boring. Seriously. But before all that lovely stuffs, I recently spoke to someone about an amazing game made by legendary FPS developers id Software. But who did I speak to? And what was the game in question? Hmm? Hmm? Well, it's it's the one you can see in the footage that's running here, so kind of uh, kind of ruined my intro a bit there. Um Hi, my name is Tim Willits and I am the creative director at id Software working on Rage, and you are watching Platform 32. Apophis, the great god of chaos, raised his mighty hand, and both the just and unjust felt his wrath. We call this place the Wasteland. Doesn't take a genius to understand why. Justice, the way it once worked, is a thing of the past. But I believe someone can set things right again. Maybe you're the man for the job. Who, me? Yeah, maybe, but, you know, it's got to depend on the health benefits, job progression, and... Ah, oh, never mind. The red ring of death, the PSN outage, those things give me rage. What doesn't give me rage is the thought of a brand new first-person shooter from the daddies of the genre, id. We were downright privileged to grab a couple of minutes with gaming legend Tim Willits, the creative director at id, so he could let us in on what to expect from this post-apocalyptic uber shooter. So, rage is a brand new game from id Software. So if you're not familiar with id Software, you know, we're the guys that invented the first person genre with Wolfenstein and Doom and Quake. So Rage, brand new for us, brand new technology. Rage is set uh, uh, in, in the distant future. Uh, the story takes place after an asteroid destroys most of civilization. You play a survivor from the past and you need to learn to survive in this, in this new world with bandits and mutants and, and the authority. Uh, Rage, at its core, uh, is a first-person game, uh, but we've uh, elevated the experience by adding vehicle combat, vehicle racing. Uh, if you're familiar with id Software games, in the past we haven't had much story, but Rage has a, it's a good deep story. Uh, there's a whole host of interesting characters that you interact with. Uh, you know, we feel that you know, Rage as a game is it's a very complete experience. Judging by the graphics and the gameplay footage we're seeing here, the visuals in Rage are going to be something special. What engine is running Rage, and what special things will it be able to do? So Rage is built on our brand new technology, id Tech 5. And the cornerstone of that technology is the mega texture or the uh, virtual texture system where we're, our artists can uniquely paint and texture everything in the world different. You know, so gone are the days that you're running through the same space corridors for 20 hours. In Rage, everywhere you go will feel and look different. That's right, viewers. You won't have to wait an age for part two of my Rage preview because it's coming up later on in the show, when we'll be back talking to Tim about the gameplay and his favourite part of Rage. Stay tuned! For me, turn-based strategy games are more yawn-based strategies, so to be completely honest, I wasn't really looking forward to trying out Ghost Recon Shadow Wars. I like fast-paced, action-packed games, not slow plodding games of cyber chess. Then I found out that the creator of the game was Julian Gollop, who was once responsible for one of my all-time favouritest Spectrum games ever, Chaos. Sure, it was also a turn-based strategy, but 
you could have up to eight players at once, and there were wizards and minotaurs and medusas and orcs, and, and well, you get that point. It was awesome, and basically at that time, there was no such thing as Duke Nukem or Doom. So anyway, as soon as I knew that, I was ready and willing to dive straight into the Shadow Wars, and boy, am I glad I did. The game puts you in the many boots of the ghosts, who are super stereotypical American soldiers trying to stop some cranky Russian dudes doing bad stuffs to the world. Or something. And as you progress through the game, you will build up your fire team and meet new members who will join your squad. Each soldier has their own unique skills which you must micromanage and upgrade via a simple levelling system which awards stars at the end of each level that you can share amongst your most valued teamsters. Movement and attacking are all done via a simple control scheme whereby each character has a certain number of squares they can move depending on the terrain and surrounding landscapes. For instance, moving through bushes or water will reduce the number of squares your characters can travel. Green squares show where you can attack from, and again, objects and terrain must be taken into account if you wish to succeed. Shooting from a high vantage point will increase your damage multiplier, but may leave you open to attack, while taking cover in a building will reduce the damage you take, but your attack range will ultimately suffer. Another disappointment is the lack of online multiplayer. All that exists is a kind of pass the parcel mode which lets you and a friend take it in turns to play using the same 3DS. It's not the end of the world, it, it just would have been nice, you know, just, just nice. To someone who has never played a game like this before, a lot of this review must have sounded like boring gibberish. And to be fair, at first glance, Ghost Recon does look boring. Spend enough time with it though, learn the controls well enough, and you will be absorbed into the tactical side of war. Whether you are working out flanking manoeuvres, or setting up a defensive perimeter, if your planning pays off, the sense of achievement is a reward in itself. It sure is me. Thanks for that review. Now, stay tuned viewers, because straight up after the break, I'll be doing my own reconning, minus all the ghosts, because there are reviews of Steel Diver, Brink and Section 8 Prejudice, plus more of Tim Willits and Rage, all up after this. Ahoy there, Viewingtons! That's... that's my new name for viewers. Yeah. Viewingtons. Uh, coming up in this part of the P32 special, I'll be getting wetter than an otter's pocket as I take a look at Steel Diver for the 3DS. But first up, I set my sights on downloadable shooter Section 8 Prejudice and blow a review shaped hole right in its little face. Boom! Face shot! Um, uh, headshot. <laughs> Like most gamers, I'm pretty blooming lazy. Sometimes I want to play a new game without having to bother with an hour long mission to and from the shops, so for me, the convenience of digital downloads is a blessing. Section 8 Prejudice, the sequel to TimeGate's relatively unsuccessful 2009 release Section 8, is available now for gamers on the PSN or the Xbox Live Arcade. Prejudice takes place directly after the events of the first game, and although it stays true to most of the gameplay aspects from the original, the developers have actually managed to improve on them and add a whole host of exciting new features into the mix. One massive change is that we get treated to an actual single player campaign this time around, and I've got to say, for a DLG it's very well done, but at 5 hours long it is pretty short, even though being a downloadable title means it does actually have a valid excuse for that. While playing through the campaign you will be shot onto the battlefield from an orbiting dropship, learn how to use your temporary weapon lock and break the speed of sound thanks to your battlesuit super sprint function. These abilities are carried over from the first game but are still as impressive as the first time round. The weapons however seem a bit pathetic and your assault rifles and machine guns are more pew pew than 
boom! Plus, the aiming could be slightly smoother, but it's really nothing that impacts the overall gameplay. Multiplayer is where you will get the most from the game, and although the modes available, Swarm and Conquest, can also be played offline, nothing beats the thrill of blasting down into the action with your mates backing you up. Swarm is another attempt to rip off Gears of War's successful horde mode, but here the matches last for a set 15 minutes, and you and your squad are tasked with defending a control point from wave after wave of enemy troops. The higher the wave number, the more enemies there are, and the stronger they become. We've seen it all before, but Prejudice pulls it off well and delivers a very fun experience. Finally, I have to mention the free spawn system for Prejudice. You can choose anywhere on the map to spawn, and your soldier will be fired from your spaceship straight onto the battlefield. It looks really impressive dropping through the clouds, but the main bonus here is that it completely eliminates camping. A stubborn sniper may be a problem in other games, but here you can spawn and land directly on top of him, splattering him into the ground. Splat. Be careful where you aim your drop though, because the enemy team can deploy anti-air turrets which will vaporise you before you get a chance to even set foot on the battlefield. Even though the game is not perfect, especially when compared to a AAA release, Section 8 is still one of the best examples of a downloadable title to date. It's jam-packed with content, and shooter fans especially will find loads to keep them occupied here, and for the price you will pay for this game, it deserves to be downloaded right now. More of this calibre of downloadable games now, please developers. Do not let him into that bunker! When you think Nintendo games, you think Mario, you think Nintendogs, you might even think Pilot Wings. Chances are, however, you won't think Steel Diver. Because this submarine shooter, puzzler, time trialer mishmash is a bit of a random title in the Nintendo 3DS lineup, and the only one so far not based on an already successful franchise. So join me, Captain Higgers, as I find out whether this game will make you up Periscope, or whether it will be a dive dive! <laughs> Sorry. Completely ignoring any of the control sticks or buttons, you must guide your submarine of choice through some beautiful, tranquil, but perilous levels using only the touchscreen, which holds a whole host of buttons, dials, and sliders. A word of warning here, you will need to use your stylus to play this, as the touch points on the screen are so small that they just do not respond to finger touches at all, so make sure you don't lose it, otherwise you'll be stuck with a pretty much unplayable game. At first, this is a very tricky game to get the hang of. It plods along at a snail's pace, and the odd control scheme will leave anyone scratching their heads for the first hour or so. And in the beginning, I just couldn't really see the point to it. Then suddenly, I got it. The controls started to make sense, and the game went from fiddly and frustrating to a completely unique and strangely moorish experience. Judging your sub's trajectory, all the while making minute changes to the speed and depth is thoroughly satisfying once you get it right. And dodging a falling rock or homing torpedo by inches is heart-pounding stuff when things are moving so slowly. Will it hit? Will it? Ooh! Etc, etc. Other cool original touches are dotted around the game, like the way the ship springs a leak when damaged. You will lose control of your vessel until you have plugged the leak on the touchscreen using your stylus. Then there is the periscope mode, which has its own separate game if you feel the need to play a watery FPS. By using the built-in 3DS gyroscope, you can physically spin around to find the enemy ships, and although it could make you a little dizzy, it does work rather well. Thankfully, you can also use the touchscreen to change your viewpoint, so you won't have to look too much of an idiot if you decide to play a steel diver somewhere out in public. There's underwater puzzles to solve, boss battles, and even perks to collect in the form of decals for your sub which alter things like your speed or strength, but just as you start to really enjoy the game, it ends. 
after seven levels, and two of those levels will only unlock after you've completed the other levels with all three subs. This can get pretty boring as there's not much variety to the levels, and because of this it can feel like a bit of a chore trying to unlock them. Sure, there are short time trial missions and a battleship style turn-based strategy game involved to pad things out, but did the main game really need to be that short? Five or so extra levels and this would have been highly recommended, but at the moment I would say wait until it drops in price before you snap it up, because there is a great game in here, it's just hard to find and when you do it doesn't last very long. Oh, I've got that sinking feeling. We must be approaching another ad break. Well, either that or I actually am sinking. Wait, just, just let me check. Nope. No, it's cool. I'm not sinking. It's a break. So I'll be back in a minute or two with a fistful of brink and a cage full of rage. Hey there! I hope you had fun doing whatever people do during ad breaks. I only exist in this program, so when it cuts to commercials I just disappear. Poof! Gone. It's weird. Nah, only joking. I went for a poo. We've got more Tim Willits and more Rage just around the corner, but now, here's my Brink review. Brink has been selling itself as a shooter which blurs the line between solo and multiplayer gameplay, giving you the option to play through the campaign mode either on or offline. It's a nice idea in theory, but when you take a proper good look at it, all this basically means is that the story mode is nothing more than the online multiplayer maps stuck together by a few forgettable cutscenes. So is this a bad thing or a good thing? Well, in terms of variety to the gameplay, it's pretty bad. With no difference between the single player and multiplayer, it means you can't fall back on one if you get bored of the other. But in terms of character customization, it's great as you can earn XP and build up your character's look and weapon loadout without having to jump online to do it. There is a whole host of customization options available across the four different character classes, and each has their own specific perks, buffs, and gadgets which can be unlocked as you rise in rank. You can also unlock different body types. You start with the medium body type, but can later choose to be either a heavy or a light. A heavy gets all the big cool guns and can take a load of damage, but he's sluggish and not very agile, while the light body type is a lot weaker, but can pull off many more parkour-tastic moves around the levels. Now, the parkour aspect of Brink was another big sell point of the game, and the much-touted Smart System, which stands for smooth movement across random terrain, is pretty darn genius. For some reason though, here the movement seems quite sluggish. Sprinting never really feels quite like sprinting. You'll only really feel the benefits of the smart system if you play as the light body type. So if the parkour action is what brought you here, it's best to ignore medium and heavy once you unlock light and just concentrate on that. There are multiple missions in each level and these can include hacking, escorting, guarding or destroying certain objectives and each of these missions must be completed by a different character class. For instance, a hacking mission must be completed by an operative while a mission that calls for a door to be blown up will need a soldier. You can easily swap between classes at the many control points, but you won't win this war as a one-man army, which causes a whole load of problems when you play this in single player, because the bots are just incredibly, frustratingly, hair-rippingly stupid, and it takes all the fun from the game, chews it up and spits it back in your face. Dirty fun. The stylish graphics are a massive plus in terms of looks, and this helps add to its original look and feel. But for some reason, everything seems to appear in soft focus unless you're stood right next to something. Couple that with the weird muted sound effects and the angelic music which plays when you are knocked down, and instead of playing an insane parkour action blaster, it feels like you're floating around a comic book style dream world. There is a hell of a lot of fun to be had here, but you have to be in the right mindset, you have to be playing with like-minded friends, and you have to be able to find a lag-free game. Then it's gold. Played solo though, Brink will leave you screaming in frustration at the TV, and nothing will stop you wanting to parkour all the way back to the shops to trade it in. I am gutted.
Welcome back to part two of my Rage Preview. In part one, Tim Willits told us all about the graphics, but now let's hear about the most important ingredient of a game, the gameplay. Go Tim! It's not only the environments that are different, we really try to mix up the gameplay too. Besides the arsenal of weapons that you have in Rage, you have things like engineering items and ammo types, um, and then of course, you know, the, the weapons on the vehicles, and that adds to the experience and adds to the, the player choice. So basically, on top of the amazing visuals, we are going to be able to get our hands on tons of customizable weapons, gadgets, and vehicles. Oh man, I think I dribbled a little. Ugh. So Tim, I love horror games and I'm especially fond of Doom 3 and all the scares it brought with it. Will you be sticking to that kind of spooky style for Rage? In Rage, unlike Doom 3, Doom 3 was a horror game, uh, when Rage is uh, more action based. You know, there's a few things that maybe jump out at you, but it's not really our focus. Okay, so it's more action packed. That's cool. I'm still psyched about it no matter what tone the game takes. Seeing as you are the creative director on Rage and have overseen the whole development of the game, what would you say is your favourite thing about Rage? My favourite thing is Mutant Bash TV. And what Mutant Bash TV is, it's like this, this game show of, of, of horrors. It's kind of like Running Man. Uh, where you have to compete uh, if, you know, for, for cash and prizes uh, while hunting mutants. So it's very exciting, it's very over the top, it's very ragey, uh, Mutant Bash TV. People may already be familiar with Mutant Bash TV as it released an excellent mobile version on the iPhone and iPad late last year. If you haven't already played it, I urge you to go and download it now, because it really is something special and it's one of the best looking mobile games out there. Now Tim, it's always been my dream to work with video games in some aspect, and I was just wondering, what was the first title you played that made you think, hmm, I want to work in the gaming industry? So, uh, I was still in college when, when Doom 1 was released, and I had downloaded the Shareware episode, um, and I was, I was in that very first area, and I was looking around, and I thought for a while that was the whole Shareware, whole, or whole demo of the game. Uh, but soon I discovered that at the end of that hallway the door opened and when that door opened and I realized that there was this world uh, out there um, that I knew that's what I wanted to do so it was the very first level of Doom 1 that was a catalyst for me getting into the industry. Awesome! Now Rage is out on the Xbox 360, PS3 and PC in the UK on the 16th of September unless it's delayed and you better be looking forward to it as much as me, otherwise you'll send me into a right rage! Ah, that was too obvious. So that's it once again, show's over. Time for me to pack up my consoles and get the rock out of here for another month. Hope you all had as much fun as I did, because I had loads. And if you want more fun, remember to type Platform32 into that search bar thingy on Facebook and like the show so you can join in on all the gaming gossip and watch all our videos in glorious extendo vision before they even air on TV. Ooh, thank you, Facebooks. Oh, and before you go reaching for that remote control, stick around for a couple of minutes because the TV news guys will be right back with details on this week's competition. You could win free stuff! Yay! See ya!